Hey everyone, BlizzardKB here, and this is a video that people have been waiting for. This is a video where I compare the two different Terramixes that are now on the market. To give a little background, for years and years it used to be the Mega Minx, a 12-sided twisty puzzle with just one layer around the centerpiece. It was known that you could put more than one layer, but it wasn't de deemed viable by the twisty puzzle makers that were mass-producing puzzles for years and years until recently. The cube for You company has re released a puzzle called the Gigaminx, which adds two layers around this centerpiece. But they didn't stop there. They decided to go a little bit further and released a puzzle called the Terraminx. And the Terraminx has three layers around the center. <clears throat> well, another company decided to horn in on the act, and MF8 has released a Terraminx as well. So now these are both on the market, and there is going to get even crazier in the future because cube for You has decided to put out the Petaminx, which will have four layers around the center, and that will come out later in 2010. So a lot of a lot of time, a lot of uh, new puzzles have come out recently and will be coming out around this shape of the Mega Minx with two or three or four layers. This video is going to be a comparison specifically between the q for You Terraminx and the MF8 Terraminx. First of all, you can see that the MF8 Terraminx is a little bit bigger than the q for You one, and it weighs more too. It weighs 760 grams, while the q for You one weighs 560 grams. Obviously, it's taller as well. <laughs> also, the MF8 one is a little bit more rounded around its edges than the cube for you one. It's a little sharper. If anyone's wondering about the color of the MF8 Terraminx, it's a color that's named by the company as Milk Yellow. There are actually white and black Terraminxes available from MF8, pure white and pure black, but this one is one called Milk Yellow. And obviously this one from q for You is just black. Let me look now at the turning of these puzzles. I'm going to try one, two, three layer turns with my whole hand, and then I'm going to try the same thing with my fingers. First, let's try the cube for you one. If I turn three layers, you can hear a little bit of grinding, but it can turn. Before I go any further, let me point out that I have not done anything to mod either of these puzzles, so they're operating on the same blank slate. They are just the same way that they came to me when they got shipped. I have not done any modifications at all. It's straight out of the box. So you've seen, you just saw me do a three layer turn with my whole hand. Turns all right. A three layer turn over here. As you can see, it caught a little before I was able to turn it. And I turn over here. Well, I think there's some alignment issues that are going on. So let me, oh. A uh, piece almost popped out on me there. Ugh. Okay. So that's a three-layer turn. Two-layer turns. You can see it's catching a little bit on the third layer, so it's dragging the third layer along with you. You may have to use your thumb to anchor that third layer before you try and do just a two-layer turn. And one-layer turns actually don't catch it all, which is very surprising. It basically doesn't move. Now let's try that with my fingers, see if I can turn these sides. First let me try a one layer turn, and as you can see I'm adding some real pressure on here, but I'm not getting anywhere. Let's see if it's, there's an alignment issue. Okay, it can turn, so I'm going to turn and then try and turn it now with my finger, and I'm still not having much success. Okay, I'm going to align it again and try a two-layer turn with just my finger. And I'm really not getting very far. Now finally, let me try a three-layer turn. And I'm really trying hard to get this puzzle to move, and I'm not having a lot of success. I'm already trying to move back into using my whole hand where I can get it to move a little more smoothly. Ugh. Okay. 
still some alignment issues. I'm going to get it back to its original position, and then we'll try this. Wow, we'll try this with the MF8. Okay, here we go. MF8 with the whole hand, three layer, two layer turns. It actually catches a lot more than the than the Q4U one. Actually, you could see that third layer was coming along with me even though I was just touching two layers. And one layer still catches a bit more than the cube for you one. Let me try another side. Three layers. Uh, two layers. I'm going to anchor that with my hand. Two layer turns. And here is a one layer turn. I'm anchoring it with my thumb as well for the one layer to make sure things don't move. Here's another side, three layer, two layer, and one layer. I'm anchoring with my thumb. Now let's try and do it with just my fingers. I'll do a one layer turn. Oh, whoops. Wow. <laughs> that was not the side that I was aiming for. Okay, it should be a line now. One layer turns with just my finger. Can it be done? Let's see. I turn a bit, can it, be, can it turn? Okay, well, let me try it with my thumb going the opposite direction. If I anchor the two lower ends with my thumb, it is actually possible out of the box to start moving one side. Two layer turns, if I anchor the third layer, I can move it a, pretty, a little bit with my finger. Not as smooth as I would like. But it does move. And three layer turns, you can actually do it. It actually works best of all. So it is possible. And there is also the possibility that it could be I just didn't have things aligned correctly, but those are my impressions right now. I do a two layer turn if I hold that. It seems to hold. And one layer turns here as well. It seems to be working out. Okay, there doesn't seem to be a lot of alignment issues with the MF8 one. There are considerable alignment issues with the Q4U one, though. You have to really watch out to make sure everything is aligned. This one is much, much more forgiving. One other thing that needs to get mentioned is the stickers. The Q4U Terraminx has much better stickers. Bring it up to the camera. You can see that these look almost... Like they fill the entire puzzle, uh, each QB. Whereas with the MF8 one, there are a lot of strange gaps. These stickers are not big enough for the puzzle in general. And there are some strangely shaped ones, especially in some of these centerpieces where it's almost not clear how you're supposed to align the stickers. There's a lot of extra space where there really doesn't need to be. So you see a lot more of the actual color of the puzzle than you should be. You can see on this side there's a lot of milk yellow that you can see through here that you shouldn't normally see. And the stickers don't feel to be the same kind of quality that the, the Cube for You stickers are. From what I understand, these are vinyl stickers from, Cube, from CubeSmith. So that, would, that might explain the high quality in the stickers. So in general, if I bring these two puzzles together, the puzzle that I would recommend of these two Terraminxes, the Q4U and the MF8 one, would be the MF8 one. It, it's bigger, so it's harder to hold in your hands. You may have to rest it on the table in order to turn it, but the turning is much, much easier. You can almost finger trick with it right out of the, right out of the container that it comes in. And there aren't as many alignment issues as there are with the Q4U one. Let me say this, though. I have not done anything at all to mod this cube for you, and I am very convinced that if you mod it, it could be almost as good as this MF8 one. There are, this does not have the same issues as the Gigaminx. A lot of these inner pieces that are on the puzzle, they are actually capped. So if you were, if you mod this puzzle, I am sure that you would be able to, this is, this is what I'm talking about. This area here is capped. On the Gigaminx, a lot of these were not capped, and so there was a lot of extra catching on this puzzle in the Gigaminx, which is not happening in the Terraminx. If you adjust this, if you adjust the screws, if you sand it down, maybe if you 
if you add some lube, if you make some other adjustments as necessary, I'm sure you can get this turning a lot better than you're seeing in this video. I just want to show it straight out of the box compared to this one. But I still do recommend this MF8 one. Again, I am Blizzard KB, and this is a review of both the Cube4U and MF8 Terra Mixes. I recommend the MF8.